So now we're going to talk about um, what's called compound interest. So the compound interest formula looks like this. A equals P times 1 plus R divided by N to the power of N times T. Okay? And I'll explain what all that means in a minute. Um, but the idea is you're taking some money and you're going to invest it and you're going to get a certain percentage rate of interest. Um, gosh, the interest rates are pretty low nowadays, I think, if you're like putting it in a savings account. But let's say you earn like 3% interest. Then you put, you know, $100 in the bank and then after so much time, it depends on when they're compounding it, but if you do it for a year, if that's your what's called APR, so annual percentage rate, So if the APR is 3%, um, that at the end of the year, they're going to take 3% of your $100 or $3 and put that in your account. Okay, So that's how you earn money on investments is by earning interest. Um, the idea with compound interest then is, so say you start with $100 and at the end of one year you have $103. Well, then the next year you're going to get the interest 3% of $103, so whatever that is, and then it's going to keep increasing that way. So um, it makes a difference how often they compound the interest. Sometimes they might do it annually, sometimes they might do it quarterly, um, all of that makes a difference. Okay, so one thing we have to be uh, concerned with is the annual percentage rate, and people will talk about that. Um, you don't have to necessarily be investing money. You could also be taking out a loan, and um, the formulas work similar to that. But we're pretty much just going to be talking about in, uh, making money. <laughs> That's a better idea, right? Making money. So um, we're looking at compound interest in that form. The nominal rate is the same thing as the APR, okay? So that's going to be your yearly percentage rate. Okay, so now let's talk about this formula and what everything means. So formulas are great, but they're only as good as uh, your knowledge of how to use it, right? Okay, so A represents what we call the amount in the account. So that's fun to say because it rhymes. So say you're going to take $100, you're going to invest it at 3%, and you're going to leave it in there for 10 years. Then in 10 years, you come back and you say, well, how much money do I have? That's the A, okay? That's the total amount you have after so much time. P, P represents the, what we call the principal. And that's the way you spell it. Um, that's the money you're, the amount you're starting with. So in my case, the $100 would have been the P. So I was putting in $100. Uh, it's the initial amount, okay? Initial or starting, starting amount. Not how much you have after 10 years, but what you started with. Okay. Now, a lot of times students have questions about the one. That's part of the formula. It's just the number one. We have it there because we're always, uh, in these problems that we're doing, uh, in real life it doesn't always work this way, but um, our investments are always earning money. So we're always going to get back at least what we put in, at least what we started with. So that's the $100 that I started with, and that's what the 1 is representing. 1 times that $100, so I'm going to at least get the $100 back, plus whatever interest I earn. Now, the way to find that interest, then, is you take um, the R. Okay, so R is for the rate, and it's usually given as an APR, or nominal rate. Um, uh, it's usually given as a percentage. So when we talk about 3%, um, R is equal to, you have to change it to a decimal, 0 0.03, okay? So um, just remember when they tell you the, the interest rate, um, you're going to change that to a decimal to use it in the formula. Now, N, N is the tricky one. It, well, it's not tricky, but it's the number of times the interest is compounded
in a year. So if I'm only doing it annually, like in my example over here, I had the $100, $100 is just sitting there for a whole year. Um, and then at the end of the year, I get my $3 and it rolls over. But if I did it halfway in the middle, you know, like after six months, I would have like a dollar fifty, you know, added to my account. And then that amount would be earning interest for the next six months. So the more you compound it, the more money you're going to earn um, in a shorter time frame. OK, so sometimes there's a big difference. Uh, sometimes there's not a big difference, but uh, N is how often it's going to be compounded. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next video. T, T is the number of years. You're, it's time and it's number of years. So we talked about, well, it, what happens if we leave our money in the account for 10 years or 15 years or 20 years? That's what um, your retirement accounts and stuff are based on these ideas. Uh, so you can like hopefully grow your account so that your, I, your IRA or something so that you'll have enough money to retire. Now, if you're going to, you know, look at retirement just for the young people out there, um, you know, they say if you just put like $20 a month away and start it, you know, early that, you know, it'll grow much quicker than if you were to wait a lot of years and then start it. So, and it all has to do with compound interest. Okay. So we're going to show you how to use this formula in the next video.